Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section you should be able to describe the structure and function of the breathing system in humans. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand here? Well, we have to be able to describe the structure and the function of the human breathing system. This basically means that you have to be able to draw a diagram of the lungs, label it, and know the function of each part. Reading chapter 30, Human Breathing. Picking it up at page 338 at the heading of the Human Respiratory System. The human respiratory system is composed of, or made of, a pair of lungs and a series of tubes. The respiratory system, in other words your lungs, is located in the chest, also called the thorax or the thoracic cavity. The bottom of the thorax, the bottom of your chest, is formed by a sheet of involuntary muscle called the diaphragm. Involuntary meaning it is not under your conscious control. The diaphragm separates the chest from the lower abdominal cavity or abdomen. In other words, the diaphragm cuts you in half. The ribs and intercostal muscles form the walls of the thorax. Contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles change the size of the thorax and are responsible for ventilation, which is the movement of air in and out of the lungs, in other words, breathing. Parts of the respiratory system. Starting with the head, there is your nose and your mouth. Nasal passages lead from your nose to the back of your throat. These nasal passages are lined with mucous membranes and little hairs called cilia. The pharynx is another word for your throat. The epiglottis is a little lid, if you like, that covers over the windpipe when you're eating food so that when you swallow the food will go down your food pipe instead of down your windpipe leading to a danger of choking. The larynx is located in your neck. The larynx is also known as your Adam's apple. The larynx has vocal cords which move or vibrate as the air travels up and down from your lungs. Then there is your windpipe or trachea. The trachea is covered with little rings of cartilage which helps to keep the trachea open so that air can travel. Think of the pipe out of a vacuum cleaner at home. The next idea is that this is your right lung. Notice it is on your left hand side as you draw it, but it's actually the right hand side of the person. This is the person's right hand. You have your ribs and in between your ribs you have the intercostal muscles. These are the muscles or the flesh that you actually eat when you're eating spare ribs. The ribs protect the lungs. Remember this is a function of the skeleton. It is also the reason why you should not move a person in an accident because if they have broken their ribs they might actually injure their lungs with the sharp bones. The diaphragm stretches across your chest and separates the chest from your abdomen. Looking at the lungs a little bit more closely, we'll notice that they're covered in pleural membranes to allow friction-free movement. Uh, the windpipe branches into two bronchii for pleural. Each bronchus reminds me of a tree trunk and the bronchioles are all the little branches of the tree trunk. The bronchioles end in the alveoli or swellings called air sacs. Turning to page 339. Nose. Air can be inhaled through the nose or mouth. The two openings into the nose are called the nostrils. The nostrils are separated by the septum, coming from Latin meaning separate s e p separate same word divides the divides the heart in two 
This is made of cartilage at the lower end and bone near to the face. Each nostril leads into the nasal chambers or the nasal passages. Breathing in through the nose is beneficial because the air is filtered or cleaned by the hairs and mucus in the nostrils, meaning that the uh, pathogens or disease-causing organisms are filtered out of the air along with any dust or debris. The air is moistened and it is warmed as it passes through the nasal passages. These points here are important to keep an eye on uh, and we must realize that moist warm air passes more easily from the lungs into the bloodstream. Pharynx. In the pharynx a flap of tissue called the epiglottis closes over the trachea or windpipe when we swallow. This prevents food and drink from passing into the trachea. Out of the side, the pharynx is the word for the throat and the larynx is the word for the voice box. Think of laryngitis, you won't be able to speak. The epiglottis works automatically. If food or drinks get past the epiglottis, we say that they've gone down the wrong way. So remember, if you're behaving like a pig and talking with your mouth full, then you're in danger of choking. In this case, we cough, which forces the material back up the windpipe to prevent it from blocking the passage of air in and out of the lungs. Just below the epiglottis is the larynx. The larynx, or Adam's apple, contains two vocal cords. These vibrate to produce sound when we force air across them. This is the function of the Adam's apple, or the larynx, is to produce sound. Our tongue and lips convert the sound into speech. As a matter of interest, men's larynxes are larger than women's, so as a result they tend to have deeper, louder voices. Trachea and subdivisions. The trachea are the windpipe and the subdivisions, which are the bronchi and the higher bronchioles, they're all made of muscle and elastic fibres, along with C-shaped rings of cartilage. Now cartilage is a strong, rigid material and the function of this, very important, is that it prevents the tubes from closing in when air is drawn in through them. In other words, the rings of cartilage help to hold the windpipe open. The walls of the lower, smaller bronchioles do not contain cartilage. They only have muscle and elastic fibers and are flexible. These are the bronchioles that become narrow during an asthma attack and give the feeling of breathlessness. All the tubes in the respiratory system are lined with mucus and cilia, which are tiny hairs. This is a very important point. It overlaps in the chapter uh, about immunity. It's your first line of defense. This is our first line of defense to keep the disease-causing organisms out. And here we meet it again. So these act to defend our lungs from infection. The mucus is sticky and traps small particles such as dust and pollen grains, bacteria and viruses or allergens. We can be allergic to pollen grains, so these are trapped in this mucus in our nose. The cilia beat or wave about and they create an upward current. And this will move the mucus upwards and past your epiglottis and then you will swallow it because it will pass down into the esophagus and into the stomach. And keeping in mind, there's acid in your stomach which will kill any microorganisms that might enter. Another first line of defense. We often cough to clear our throats. This forces mucus away from the vocal cords and up past the epiglottis. Turning to page 340. The lungs. The lungs are large, pink, spongy structures in which gas exchange takes place. Each lung is enclosed or covered by a pair of pleural membranes called the pleura. Keeping life easy, let's imagine them as two layers of cling film with a liquid between them. Strictly speaking, the outer pleural membrane lines the chest wall and the diaphragm and the inner one lines the lungs. The pleural cavity is the gap between the two pleura. The pleural cavity contains a liquid which lubricates the membranes and allows friction-free movement during breathing. 
Looking at the diagram here on the left, we can see quite clearly that we have the windpipe covered in the rings of cartilage to keep it open, that the windpipe branches into two bronchuses, bronchi to be grammatically correct. The bronchus reminds me of a tree trunk and the bronchus will then divide into all the other little branches that are called bronchioles. And the bronchioles end in the swellings which are called the air sacs. Now we have arrived at the end of the lesson. Have we achieved our objective? At the end of this section, you should be able to describe the structure and function of the breathing system in humans.